Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Garbage to Gold. Today is all about gold-plated pins and how to recover that oh-so-precious metal for yourself. Now remember, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, it's definitely time. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when we upload new content. We've got some more great videos coming up, and we'll be uploading new stuff on a regular basis. Gold pins are found in a wide variety of electronic equipment, primarily in the cable ends. Now, uh, these here are excellent quality gold pins because of the age of them. Typically, older is better. Uh, it also depends on how much current they were required to, uh, to carry at the time. But, if you're anything like me, a gold pin is a gold pin, and I say take them all. So step one in this process is fairly simple. You're going to want to remove the pins from whatever they're attached to. Uh, typically what I do is I grab a hold of them with a pair of side cutters and I don't cut, but I do pull out of the, uh, the cable and uh, you'll get as much as possible using this method. Now once you've pulled the pins out, you should be able to see a fairly distinct dividing line where the gold plating ends. You're going to want to go ahead and cut each pin uh, before that dividing line. So you want to make sure you get all the gold plating, but you don't really need all that excess metal taking up uh, the materials in your process. Okay, so once you've got a uh, number of pins collected, you can start the process of separating that gold from the pin itself. Now today we're just doing a very small batch uh, the idea being that you want to see the process and how it works. Uh, you can see here we're adding a batch of pins into a mason jar. Mason jars are strong, built to stand moderate temperature swings, and the glass is both neutral and clear, so it's easy to see what's going on. Just a reminder that the chemicals we use in this process are powerful. You want to have respect for that, so wear your gloves, either nitrile or... Uh, latex gloves, wear your mask, and always wear your safety glasses. Also, you're going to want to perform this away from pets and people in a well-ventilated area. The fumes from this, if they collect, can be harmful. So the first thing we're going to want to add here is muriatic acid. You can buy this at your local hardware store. It's uh, used for cleaning cement and other household uses, and it's about 30% hydrochloric acid. Uh, today, with this small batch, we're just going to add one cup into the mixture, carefully. So, as you can see, this, is, this chemical reaction is already taking place. And this will work. This is all that you require. Um, the muriatic acid, which is 31% uh, hydrochloric acid. This will eat away at all of the base metals and leave you with just the gold uh, from these pins. Now, if you want to speed this process up, you have a couple of choices, and you'll see lots of people on YouTube that build a fancy uh, contraption and put a fish bubbler in here. And they basically are bubbling oxygen into this, into this mixture to speed up the process uh, of this hydrochloric acid solution. Not necessary. You can actually just cover this up loosely and leave it overnight or a week or however long it takes. Give it a little stir every now and then, and this will, uh, this will work. Now, if you want to speed up the process without using the fish bubbler, you have another option. So all we're going to do is we're going to add um, hydrogen peroxide, and we're going to add it in about a two to one ratio. So we used a cup of the muriatic acid and we're gonna use about a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide. There is no specific amount, you can't get this wrong, so I'm not necessarily going to measure it out, I don't wanna risk spilling it with my, with my cup that I'm using. So, but if you wanna speed the process up, we're just going to add about a half a cup of the hydrogen peroxide to our HCl solution, and that will keep oxygen in the mixture, and it will speed this process up. Okay, so as you can see, after we've added the hydrogen peroxide, uh, it appears that our bubbles have slowed down a little bit, but in actuality, they're actually just clinging to the pins a little more. 
uh, and our solution is turning to a greenish kind of goldish color. Typically that tells us that you're getting copper uh, dissolved into the solution and you can already see there's actually a couple of some little flakes uh, starting to starting to come into the solution so and the pins are changing color if you can I don't know if you can see that but the gold is staying gold and everything else is turning a dark a dark color as it's being as it's being taken into solution so at this point uh, this is a waiting game and this is enough solution you won't have to change this um, if you use a small amount of pins um, we will uh, let this bubble away and do its thing we'll just loosely cover it you never want to tightly cover any container that has any type of reaction going on well we're back one day later and you can see there's still lots of bubbles being formed uh, and there's lots of material left to be eaten by the acid so uh, this is a waiting game and uh, patience is a virtue we'll take a look back and see how it looks tomorrow Here we are again, uh, two days later now, and not a lot has changed. Uh, we're still seeing a lot of bubbles coming up, but there's a fair amount of material left to be absorbed. Um, but we are seeing more of the gold flake uh, being carried up by the bubbles into the solution. So that is very encouraging. We'll check again tomorrow. three days and counting and at least now we're seeing a significant amount of progress uh, there's still a lot of bubbles in the solution there's still a lot of material left uh, to be taken care of uh, but we are seeing a fair amount of flakes of gold up in the solution uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a bit of a stir uh, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about uh, on the video So it's obvious that the process isn't finished yet, but we are a lot closer to that finish line than we were. So uh, we'll check back again tomorrow. Well, it looks like we're finally there. We've got no sign of bubbles, so the reaction is uh, pretty much finished. The Acid, of course, is very, very dark as it started to, uh, as it ate away all that metal. So uh, it's time to take the next step in the process. Let's get right to it. So what we're looking to do is capture the gold, which is very small pieces, um, and get rid of uh, all that acid that we were using. Now there's a lot of different ways of accomplishing that. I'm going to show you the one that I uh, I like to use. The, what I start with here is just your most basic coffee filter. Uh, coffee filter is good because it'll allow the acid to go through and it'll capture everything else. I use a strainer um, and that just is a convenient shape to hold the coffee filter. And then what you want to look for is where do you want that liquid to go that you can capture it and dispose of it properly. Uh, a couple of different choices. The one that I'm going to use today, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I've got an empty plastic bottle. So I'm going to set that over here, make sure that the camera can see that. I'm going to put this giant funnel in there, filter and strainer, and we're good to go. Now, again, the number one concern at this point, safety. So we're not in a hurry. We're just going to pour this through slow and easy, making sure that everything goes exactly where we want it to go. Now, before we start that, 
before we start that, what we want to do, I'm not sure exactly how to show you this other than demonstrate. What we want to do is we want to get as much of the gold up into the liquid as possible. So we want to get it up and floating around and not settled into the bottom. The longer that sits there, the longer it's going to, or the more of it will settle out. So what we want to do is we want to get it all stirred up carefully. Now keep in mind that at the end of this process, everything that touches that liquid needs to be disposed of properly. Okay, so here we go. We've got it all stirred up. We've got the filter exactly the way we want it. And we're just going to go nice and slow and easy. And we do not want to get all the way to the bottom of the jar. And we certainly don't want to get to the point where the liquid is overflowing the filter. Those are the two things we want to avoid. So now we're just going to patiently wait for that to get through the filter. At this point, a lot of the acid has been neutralized anyway, but we do not take any chances. What I have here is another four liter jug. This one is not empty. This one actually has water. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue the same process, except we're just going to dilute what's in there. So real careful. Maybe fill that halfway back up. Now this time it's probably a little easier to see the, uh, the flakes of gold that are all stirred up in the solution there. That's what we're after. And we're just trying to get them all by themselves. So we stir it up great. And then we pour some of it off. So what you can see there, there's still quite a bit of gold in there. And then there's also quite a bit of other material. Now in this case, the pins we chose uh, had a substantial amount of stainless and they had some organic material in there, things that isn't metal. Uh, so what you'll find is that some of what's in the bottom is not gold. So we're going to continue this process and I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this a number of times, probably use most of that four liter jug of water uh, to try and get as much of that as possible into this filter. If I find it slows down too much, if I find it slows down too much, what I can do is I can set this filter aside and I can start with a fresh coffee filter. And I'll just have to uh, have two instead of one. You don't want a hundred of these if you can avoid it. Because the next step again, every step in the process, the more filters you have to deal with, the more time and effort it's going to take. Well, as you can see, this first filter that we've been using uh, is becoming uh, problematic. It's, uh, it's taking a very long time for the, the last bit of the liquid to seep down through that, that filter. So I'm going to try and use maybe the sides of the filter, being very careful not to, uh, to overflow the top. Maybe I'll try and stir up the bottom layer of material that is blocking the filter. Uh, 
we're just trying to get through that. Now what we're going to do, before we uh, get too far away, we're going to transfer this filter into this nice little glass dish I've got. And we're going to try and do that as carefully as we can so as not to lose any of our accumulated wealth right there. We want to capture all of it. I'm just going to set that right there for the moment and we will deal with that in just a couple of minutes. Okay, here we go again. I may choose to capture some of what's left in that jar. Um, at this point, it is uh, a bunch of material that is not gold, a little bit of water, and, uh, and still some gold flakes. But for now, we're just going to set that aside so I can show you uh, the next step in this little process here. So what I've got, very simply, this is water water and it uh, this particular spray I like very much because you can go right from a wide spray down to a stream and you can pinpoint exactly what you want to hit or you can keep it wide so I set it at a fairly wide spray and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to wash the gold side of this filter into this glass jar so we're just going to open it up to expose the gold side. And I'm hoping that I can see that on the video. And we're just going to wash it down. But what we have, what we have is a layer of gold. Well, okay. Looks like uh, we've still got a little bit of cleanup to do before we... Uh, call it a day, but what you've got here is a fairly significant amount um, of gold in there. Now you got a couple of choices and we're not going to go through those in this video, but we will uh, in future videos. Uh, you can melt this down just the way it is. Uh, the good part about that is it's easy and we can show you how to do that. You end up with a gold button. The bad part about doing that is that there's certainly no guarantee that you haven't uh, made some errors along the way and introduced some impurities. Uh, there could be something that was left in the pins that you got a little too aggressive when you were pouring and you end up with something in here that's organic, something in here that is uh, a metal other than gold. Uh, certain metals take a lot longer and a lot more uh, acid to, to use up than others. So if you melt it down this way, your purity is certainly not guaranteed. You will have gold, but you don't know if it's 18 karat gold, 24 karat gold, or if it's 99.9 .9 gold. Um, you just know that you've got some gold and it looks pretty and life is great. Your other choice, uh, and we're going to go through that in a, in a subsequent video as well, is uh, you want to dissolve the gold on purpose uh, using a much stronger acid and then drop it out of solution and what that does is it basically I'm going to use the word guarantees the purity because the gold itself is going to be the only thing that comes back out of that solution and we'll show you that um, in a 
future video. So, you've got gold from pins. That's really what our goal for this video was. So, uh, we have what we want.